Hey there folks, today I'm going to compare the Wilderness Systems heavy duty HD kayak cart which has become synonymous with being the best kayak cart for heavy fishing kayaks with the new Malone Traverse Tracks kayak cart. So this is basically their answer to Wilderness Systems bunk style cart. It's uh, quite a bit different in uh, size and weight and a little bit different in design. So I wanted to go over this cart today. I've been using it for a few weeks now. And unfortunately I found that uh, they obviously didn't do their testing properly with this. There is a fatal flaw in this cart, especially if you're using the beach wheels, which I don't have here, but uh, there is a problem in its design and I'll get to that, but it may not be a problem for everyone. So uh, do stay tuned. Okay, so let's just start with price comparisons. So the Traverse Tracks from Malone is actually a very affordable cart. It's $120 with the hard wheels like this one here. If you want the beach wheel design, then it's gonna cost you $190. Now it's a full $100 more expensive to buy the Wilderness Systems HD cart. It's $220 with the hard wheels. If you wanna get it with the soft wheels, the beach wheels, like if you're going on sand and gravel, then you're gonna be paying closer to $230 or $240 depending on the retailer. So almost $100 more uh, when it compares to the hard wheels and about $40 to $50 more with beach wheels. Okay, let's do a discussion of overall design of both of these kayak carts. Now the Malone is a bunk style cart. It has an asymmetric design. So it has shorter bunks here and longer bunks on the backside here. Now there's actually nothing in the directions other than one picture on the box that shows that the short uh, ends of the bunks should go towards the stern of the kayak and the long end of the bunk should go towards the bow. That makes sense when you're setting the cart down. I think the goal here was to make it so you don't have to lift the kayak as high up to set it on the bunks. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier to install this cart on these heavy fishing kayaks. Uh, the wheels pop on and off just using a little simple press button right here, which is actually really nice. I haven't had any problems with, in, with them coming off. I thought that they might, but the, I haven't really had any issues. Um, it's super easy to install and take them off. I have not had them pop off. I'm surprised even on rough terrain. Now, what's really interesting about this design and I really like it is how easy it is to adjust the distance that the bunks are apart. You just loosen up this knob here and then you can just slide this back and forth and then you can tighten it back up. I wish they'd put uh, a flared thumb tightener on there rather than just this round knob. It's actually kind of hard to tighten up very well, but it does make it rattle and they feel kind of loose. And I've noticed that over time, um, if you are on a gravelly surface, these do start to loosen up ever so slightly and they can start to shift on their own. So make sure you regularly check these and tighten them up. You see that one loosened up right there just for me doing that. So they will loosen up a little bit. The bunks can be run in two height positions. This is the low position. And then you can take off this pin here and then you can actually raise it up, which I'll do. Pull this out. And then you can raise this up to a set of holes here. All right, put that there. So now you can see the two different bunk heights. There's a short and a tall. You can adjust it to what you need. For me running the hard tires, I can just run it on the lower position, which makes it easier for me to get the kayak on there. But if you're gonna run those beach wheels, you're going to need to run it at the higher position or else you're gonna get your kayak rubbing on the bottom, especially those larger, heavier, flat bottom style kayaks. Another thing that's nice about the Malone Traverse is how lightweight it is. There you go, it weighs three and a half pounds. That's nothing, very, very lightweight. Now the Malone cart has 10 inch wheels that are very narrow, which they kind of suck when you're on gravel uh, because they're so narrow, they really want to dig in. So if you're on any kind of loose gravel, um, I'd say like a, at a ramp or, or a launch, uh, you really need those beach wheels. These ones really dig in really badly into softer gravel um, because of how narrow they are. And also because they're only 10 inch wheels, there's just about four inches between the bottom of the cart 
and the ground. So not that much clearance. And on the wilderness cart, you actually get closer to five inches. Okay, so that is the design of the Malone Traverse tracks. Okay, so now let's look at the wilderness systems cart. Now this is the HD cart right here. It has a symmetrical design, so it doesn't matter which way you have it pointed. It can run in a high position like I have it here where the bars mount on the top here or you can mount them in these bottom grooves and have a low. I run it on the high because I am often using beach wheels if I'm on sand or gravel. And also it just prevents it from rubbing on the bottom of my autopilot. So you can run it in either position depending on what style of kayak you have. On the wilderness systems in order to adjust the bunk distance you just loosen up these little screws here, these little thumb screws which are nice, they have that flare design which I wish they would have done on the Malone. But you can loosen these up and you can move this bunk wherever you want to. It's pretty easy to do on the fly. And then what's really nice about the Wilderness Systems one is that they actually have rulers here so you can move it between different locations with uh, repeatability. So if you have multiple kayaks that you need different distancing on, you can make those adjustments by noting those marks that you had it at before and then you just simply tighten it up. It's very easy to do. The wheels come off using a pin right there, which I actually like them alone designed for that better because I have lost these pins before but overall it's very sturdy it doesn't feel jostly like the other one I can't move these bunks around at all it has 12 inch wheels which is really nice good traction on them they're very wide too so even on the hard wheels if you go through say softer gravel or something like that you don't sink in too bad. Now the wilderness cart is substantially heavier. It uh, feels a lot more robust and it weighs a little over five and a half pounds there. So quite a bit heavier than the Malone cart. So that's it. That's the wilderness HD cart. Okay, so next I'm gonna put these carts on two different kayaks, a Old Town Salty, which is a round hole design, and then my Autopilot 120. Just show you how they work. I don't tend to use straps very often um, because I'm generally just going down to the launch or coming back from the launch and just trying to get out of the way of powerboat anglers or trying to get to a more flatter level ground that I can take my gear off my kayak and not be every, in everyone's way or make it easier to load it. But they do both come with straps. The Wilderness Systems comes with a gray strap, a single one that wraps all the way around. And the Malone comes with two straps, um, one that ties off to each post on both sides and then cinches down. Okay, so we're gonna start with the short end of those bunks sticking up and then we got the long end down. So I'm gonna lift this salty up on there. Weighs about 85 pounds. Looking to go right underneath the seat there, sort of that prime spot. It settles out really nice because of that bunk design. So there you go, you can see that bunk design settles out in there very well. Plenty of space between the tires. But you can see how everything kind of moves. It, it looks, it doesn't look that solid, but it's held up so far. But those tires do lean pretty hard side to side. But as you can see, it's very fine for moving the kayak back and forth. Keeps it stable and on there, no problem. Doesn't want to slide off or bounce off. Seems to hold up pretty well on that end. Okay, now let's do the same with the Wilderness Systems HD cart. I have to lift the kayak a little higher because of these taller bunks on the back. So you can see it sits very well there. Nice and solid. I think the bunks make more contact and just make it more stable. You see, you don't get as much flex in the cart itself just because it's a sturdier build with more attachment points. A heavier cart overall. 
and also those wider tires. Let's move it around on the Wilderness Systems HD. The Salty can handle this. It can handle the Salty very easily. This is a light kayak. It doesn't slip and slide. It has a lot of contact on those two bunks. And you can't really rock it because it's just so solid on there. With those longer bunks, it's very stable. Behind me is my Autopilot 120, and this is a very heavy kayak. 125 pounds, without the battery, without everything in there. If you have that thing fully loaded down, it's gonna be 200 pounds easily, especially if you're using a lead acid battery. Now, I need a kayak cart that can handle beach wheels because I am launching on gravel, I am launching on sand. That is just part of my fishing experience is being able to use unimproved launches and gain close access to fishing grounds. And in order to use this cart with beach wheels or sand wheels on a heavy kayak like this uh, Old Town Autopilot, I've got to have these bunks in the high position. And when I started running them in that position is when I discovered a fatal flaw in this cart's design. So I'm going to raise these bunks up. I'm going to just show you quickly that the, how the wilderness system works with the old town. I have another video also showing wilderness systems versus Malone's other uh, wide tracks uh, cart. Uh, but I've been using the wilderness systems carts um, on my autopilot and other heavy fishing kayaks for over a year now and they are rock solid. I've had no issues with this piece of equipment. But I've got to show you what's going on with this Malone cart. Um, so that you don't may end up making an investment in something that's not right for you. So I'm going to quickly uh, raise up these bunks, just show you the Wilderness Systems cart, and then I'll show you what's wrong with this. Okay. So to line up my cart here on the autopilot, this is the Wilderness Systems. It is a heavy lift and a high lift, but I've gotten used to it. And they have these really nice handles on the back. This thing is solid. So you can see, that the HD cart Wilderness Systems has no problem. It's very stable, very good fit. All right, let me show you just real quick how well the autopilot, this is a 120 pound kayak, moving it around no problem on the HD. You can bounce it around. It just doesn't want to roll off. I can push it sideways, tilt it. It just doesn't want to go. It's a very, very good cart for this heavy kayak. Whew, getting a good workout. Lifting all these kayaks and moving them around. Okay, so now we're gonna do them alone. And I'm gonna show you the fatal flaw. I've had to move up these posts to the high position because that's what would be required if I had beach wheels on here so that it wouldn't rub on the bottom of this kayak. And I'm gonna show you what happens when I load this on here. That's what happens. It, because of the asymmetric design, those bunks, there's not enough pressure pushing down on it. It actually drives the bunks forward. This is especially problematic in sand and light gravel. These things just want to bury into here. You have to reach up underneath and try to get rotate, and I can't get it to rotate. You see how there's so much twist and torque in this thing from this weight of 125 pounds on it. It's actually deforming the shape of the cart. So look at the deformation in the cart here. That's in part because of those looser fittings. But look at that, those bunks aren't even lined up anymore. And it doesn't want to move forward. It doesn't work for the autopilot on the tall setting. It uh, just completely fails. Look at that. That's not good. I mean, part of the design advantage of the Malone cart is 
that shorter asymmetric design should theoretically make it easier for you to not have to lift as high up and make it sit on there. But because of that design, it doesn't work on that setting for a heavy fishing kayak. Okay, now let's test it with a lighter kayak, like the Salty. Again, in that elevated setting. Same problem. Exact same problem. It doesn't work. It makes me wonder, did they test this at all? You might ask, well, why not just flip it around? Okay, if I do that, look at that. It's even more vertical. Why even have the elevated positioning in the first place? It doesn't actually work unless you have somebody stand there and hold your cart while you load it. It's just not a good design. So if you need that additional wheel space or you're gonna be running the beach wheels, I just don't see how this is going to be an effective way to very quickly and easily load your kayak up when you're going out on the water. Because with the wilderness systems, I put it on there, it locks in, I am good to go. With this one, when I do that, it is a struggle to get it to deploy in the correct way. Like I've tried rolling it backwards, so it doesn't work. I just can't get it to work. It's frustrating. So having seen that and having these problems in the field, I cannot recommend the Malone Traverse uh, kayak cart. It's just not a well thought out or at least well tested design. Whereas the wilderness systems, it might be expensive, but it's incredibly well built. It's incredibly durable. It's very easy to use and it's reliable. And that's worth an extra hundred bucks to me. All right, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. And to support videos like this, if you can make your purchases through the hyperlinks down below, I'll put links to both of these products. Um, if you end up going with the Traverse, because you're just going to be using on a low setting and primarily on concrete, you can probably get away with it there. But I would be very interested to see what its long-term uh, lifespan is to you. I've only been using it for, like I said, a few weeks and uh, it's just not for me. All right, guys, I'll see you next time out on the water or in the yard. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder.